Okay, so continuing on here, um, I want to want to do a more of a deep dive into the actual programming of this and the use of uh, our test script builder application for code development, um, and um, and also let's scrutinize the actual data quality, and in particular let's. You know, let's do some uh, compares with the measurements we are getting from the oscilloscope with this uh, 2461. But now, as I think about going into, um, you know, looking at the data data quality of this, you know, it's going to be quite a number of unknowns associated with that if I'm doing these tests on the MOSFET, right? So one, I've I've got the uncertainty in the in the gate to source voltage, and then but then the RDS on value itself, this data sheet is, it's only giving me typicals, you know, rather than um, a specified value with error bars associated with it. Um, and you'll see, you know, this typical here is 160 milliohms. We've been coming in around 142. I happen to have a second um, specimen of the same part, and it's coming in around 150 milliohms. So, you know, I think it's within the, Certainly the um, tolerance uh, of it, but um, but to remove some of that uncertainty, I thought, well, for this exercise, let's switch over to something that's maybe going to be a little more predictable for us. And what I've got is this uh, MP9100, and I'm going to use a 100 uh, milliohm um, version of it. So you see it's called out as a 1% part. So anything between 99 and 101 milliohms is in spec for this part. Uh, in general, this part has got a great um, flat temperature coefficient. It also has the other thing it's got going for it for these uh, current mode is uh, current pulse test is you know, pretty low uh, um, inductance on it. So the pulse distortions um, pretty good. So, so I, I expect this thing is 100 milliohms plus or minus 1%. So why don't we take a peek at it? Instead of a source meter, let's just quickly use a seven and a half digit multimeter. Um, I'm already, I have with some Kelvin probes, I have connections out to this. So let me put this into four wire mode. All right, very reasonable. Um, but if I look at my full specifications for, say, this one ohm range, I'm supposed to uh, turn on a few other things. So if I come under menu, and this should look familiar to even what's, what you see on the source meter, but no sourcing, only measuring. So if I go under settings, and um, offset compensation should be on. And then let me scroll down on the instrument, and this line sync is another one I'm going to turn on. Okay, now if I come back to the home, home screen, and you know, we can see our, um, statistically what we've got going, this guy's been running for a while, so I can just um, clear. So we've got seven and a half digits two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then this half digit is the leading one, which could be a zero or a one for the one ohm range. So quite, right, so we're, you know, so I'd say uh, Caddick shipped me a, uh, a part that's pretty much on the money here. Okay, so now I've uh, put that, uh, the resistor, the 100 milliohm resistor, back into my test fixture, um, and so that I can make the measurements with the 2461 source meter. And that's, so we've got just back to power on default um, on, our, on our source meter here. Now, I have not mentioned yet, but there is a, an application, it's a free Windows-based application called Test Script Builder. And it is um, chock full of any of these that have KE underscore R examples that come with uh, just are deployed with with the instrument with the software for there and you can see we've got a, quite a few model numbers in there and then how I tend to use this is I might uh, you know, 
put out a new TSP project and create a folder for uh, by model number or by pro project, what what have you. Okay, so for this um, this RDS on uh, experiment here, what I've coded up is the ability to measure only during the 100 microseconds of interest during the high part of the pulse. So why don't we just give it a run here and then we'll walk through it. Um, down here in the instrument console, it leverages the presence of NIVISA to, uh, um, to, to connect it to instruments out here because my LAN port is busy uh, serving up this uh, um, internal web page I'm using a USB with here. There's probably many, many ways to um, to do this, but um, to run the code, what I tend to do is right click in here and then I say run this as a TSP file. Okay, so if I come to my front panel, we got some results, and then same way with my oscilloscope, there, there they are again. So there's our current and our voltage pulse. If I, let's come over here to the to the instrument. If I go into this configuration list under the source and say select, and there is one. Okay, and then if I highlight it, I can say show me the details. Okay, and that's so this is just all the various uh, ranges and values, etc. There's there's one, a measure config list also, right? Because we want to use certain ranges. We want to use the digitizers instead of the integrating A to D. And then likewise, when it's time to run it all, there's a, a trigger block here for it. So let's peek at the code again. And just a quick, quick walkthrough. We've got a, uh, you know, just kind of putting the instrument into a known state. And then I define a source config list. So I give it a name, put all the source, all the smoo.source that needs to be set, and then I just store that in there. Do a similar thing for the for the measure. All the smoo.digitize, um, store it. And in my case, how the logic of this, I decided I'm going to use a certain measure delay, and then I'm going to specify a measure duration. And that's the measure duration as well as the sample rate I'm using, which I'm back to a, a mega sample per second here, will will determine the measure count. And I'm targeting. I want 100. I want 100 data points. So um, so 100 data points will require 100 microseconds to to get plus the 400 microseconds of measure delay. So I should be coming in around 500 um, microsecond pulse widths here. The additional thing in, to those, uh, not only trigger blocks, but we actually have timers available. There are four of them on the uh, source meter. And so I'm going to use one of them to uh, give me a notification after the measure delay has occurred. What starts the timer is this thing called a notify number one event. Okay. Then we come into these trigger blocks, right? This is how we're building that little flow chart in there. So we're going to clear the buffer. We're going to turn our blue light on. We're going to recall the first index value of our source and our measure config lists. Okay, here's that notify one. So this is me starting the timer. This is starting the pulse output. This is waiting for the timer to say that the measure delay has occurred. This is measuring into the d default buffer one, the measure count. Turn the pulse off, turn the blue light off. OK, so that just loads loads it, and it's standing there ready to run. And then when it encounters this line, it runs that trigger model. This just holds off command processing until it's done. This gets stats. So just if I, let me go home and let me swipe left there. So this, these statistics that are available to you. So that's what this is, is doing. It's saying, you know, get, get the stats and put it into the stats var. And 
you'll see like uh, so I've got the average value so the the voltage that's measured during the current pulse I can just do get stats and then do the dot mean element on that and and I've got my average um, the current is measured back in this case I've got dual you know digitizing a to D's but the measured current is stored in the source value and you know stats doesn't give me a, an average on that so I had to just write a simple little uh, Lua function to sum it up and then uh, divide by n to get me an average value yeah, and then you'll see I'm just um, pushing out to the uh, user user page on here some simple summary results with it so um, okay so to perhaps uh, give a little more insight into trigger blocks and the overall timing of what happens with these guys let me open up a slightly enhanced version of that same script um, and you'll say I have with timing marks the source meter on a DB9 connector on the rear of it, it's got six lines of digital I.O. So with the lines I have highlighted here, I've configured uh, line number one to be an output, and it's going to give me a, an active low 10 microsecond uh, strobe when the stimulus occurs. And the stimulus is a Notify 2. So if I pop down here to the uh, trigger model, so you'll see I've just kind of I've added um, some some lines in here to give me some uh, you know to twiddle the digital digital line on there so on the scope let me enable channel one and I've just got a conventional uh, probe hooked up to the uh, to the appropriate pins on that on that uh, DB9 so now if I um, right click and run this and now let's look at our let's look at this and so in the trigger blocks um, I am um, after I start the measure delay timer I'm strobing I then I turn on my pulse then I strobe it and then I sit there and I wait for the uh, for the delay timer the measured delay timer to to arrive when I receive that then I strobe it I commence with my 100 measurements and then when I'm done with that I strobe it um, and then out here off the off the screen when I'm when I'm all finished up I'm, I'm strobing it again but um so you, you know it gives us gives us some good good insight there I could um, let's see if we can't enhance our uh, our visibility there a little bit so if I you know align my cursors with the um, values there so so now this the scope uh, measurements of the I and the V are aligned well with the uh, with the with the measurements of here at the risk of getting greedy here let me turn on a measurement here real quick with the uh, with the with the scope so if I come into the math and turn that on and then let me do a measure on the math let me add a mean for him to and so it's able to do um, so the math function is just the divide the V by the by the I and then with the measurement it's gated between the cursors so it's able to give me um, the R value based upon uh, you know the average R value between the between those two guys so you see right we've got we've got great agreement across the board between the scope as well as the source meter on this measurement